Hey guys, and welcome back to a special episode of Amelia Saves. This is the special podcast with slides that I do once a month and post to my blog. So if you're listening to this on your boat ride to work, I apologize you're not going to see the amazing images I have for you today. But if you're watching this from the comfort of your boat or home, then you're going to be able to see some pretty incredible things. Now, take a second and listen to this sound. Now, if you hear that for the first time and have no context, like you just did, you're going to think that sounds like a deranged monkey that has high-pitched voice coming out of its mouth. Well, this is a fennec fox. And on this short podcast for today on Amelia Saves, we will be talking about this next big adventure. So, without further ado, drumroll please. The fennec fox. I recently got back from a trip around the world in 80 days with my pals, Mr. Hexter, Stefan, and Roberto. On this trip, I found an area in North Africa that is not underwater. There are five, yes, five of these fennec foxes living in this small space of dry desert land, burrowing into the sand during the day to escape the heat, and coming out at night to hunt. These foxes are omnivores, feasting on a variety of prey as nighttime hunters. They enjoy insects, rodents, snails, lizard, plants, fruits, roots, and eggs. Since the land is mostly grown over with water, their prey has become strictly bugs and roots. But I did notice, while Roberto and I were doing some observations on them last week, that they are eating some water-based plant roots, which means they are adapting to their environment as much as they can. But... These fennec foxes that I found are extremely malnourished and underweight. This is four of the five that I got pictures of together sitting on a rock in the sand dunes. Their large ears provide impeccable hearing to locate their prey. As you can see, they're pretty stinking cute. These animals used to have a large sanctuary many, many years ago at the San Diego Zoo, and I felt that it is so important that I try to save them. Like I said, there are five of them. Two males, one older, and one extremely young one, and the other three are females. The very young one is at the bottom curled up, and these are three of the females. As you can see, the older one that's standing up, she is probably the mother to this young male, but why haven't the other females had babies yet, and what is happening here? I have to get these animals back to my sanctuary and figure out why or or how they, they are surviving. Why are they not procreating more? Do they realize that they're running out of food, land, resources, and they're scared to have any more children? The babies you see here are approximately eight months old. Fennec foxes try to have babies every five to six months, so this is an issue. Fennec foxes and their large elephant-like ears deserve to be saved. They are small enough that I can house them on my new airship, the Assisted Migration 2, until I get them to my new animal sanctuary in New York. Now, you may be asking, where is the original Assisted Migration? All of you followers that have been watching me during my vlogging days, now that I've gone strictly to podcasts and blogs, you know the Assisted Migration 1 very well. Well, it is housed at my animal sanctuary to give people insight into how I save these animals and what kind of technology I'm working with. With the redevelopment happening, I was able to obtain some land, or should I say, water. I was able to obtain the old Macy's building where I have my animal sanctuary to house my animals until I can get them to places where they can thrive. Now, you might be wondering, what is the plan here? Well, you see, Roberto and Stefan have become prodigies of mine, and I plan on getting my airship near the ground during the day while the foxes are burrowed. Once they come out at night, I will have a large cage covering their burrows filled with fruit, vegetables, and bugs that they haven't seen in years. I will have metal slats closed to cover the burrows, and I will bring the cage up into the airship. Once we have them saved and settled in, I will go down and send Roberto into the burrows to make sure there are no babies and to see if any of the females were preparing a nest. Since I have stopped vlogging 
My blog, podcast, and a visit to the animal sanctuary is the best way to see my work and how I'm saving these animals' lives. When you visit the animal sanctuary, you can bring food, donations, or you can just buy some things in the gift shop to help me do more research and save more animals. Now, next week, I will be back to regular podcasts. We will not have a special podcast, but I will be uploading pictures to my blog throughout the week. Now, we are going to discuss the rescue mission, how it went, and I'll hopefully have some great news to share with you about these animals. Watch for pictures on my blog post on AmeliaSaves.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and keep saving.